Back to the county seat, our topic today is uh, assessing and collecting. It's a line item you'll find on your tax bill uh, when you go to pay your property taxes each year. We're trying to uh, figure out and ferret out the details of this tax, its origins, which we covered in the first block. Uh, but I wanted to follow up with one question. Um, it says assessing and collecting, and that would, that would intimate to people that probably it is a, a fee that pays for the assessor's office and the treasurer's office who are uh, basically charged with collecting taxes. But there are several other departments within a county that can actually, depending upon the county administration, receive those funds. Is that correct, Mark? That's correct. In fact, one of the most interesting uh, offices that you would not equate to this levy would be the recorder's office because that's actually where the assessment process starts because they determine the, where the outline of the property, the, the parcel numbers, they assign the parcel numbers and then they go through that that uh, is a very complicated process in, in and of itself but then once they've created those numbers then they can turn it over to the assessor and the assessor can properly uh, assess the value for it. So, and, and commissioners are involved because they're Board of Equalization, is that right? That's right. <clears throat> and, and so we have a very small portion of our budget. Uh, I think in Davis County we assess 5% uh, of our budget to the assessing and collecting or we charge it back to that because we are the Board of Equalization. So it really is a, a fairly broad, um, I mean the attempt is to try and get it to cover all the counties. Now I did have one question that carried over. Uh, there are two separate fees. The county can levy a certain portion of the fee and the state levels a uniform fee and of that state fee the counties are still retaining 89 percent of that. So counties are really um, uh, uh, reflecting that they are consuming within that county 89 percent of the state fee plus whatever they assess on their side. Is that correct? That's correct. You have about six and a half percent of that that ends up in what's called a CAMA fee. CAM is just a computer system that's statewide system for assessing. And the other 4.5% is based on that distribution that we talked about, counties that receive funds that is not collected in their county. Do you think, that, do you think that's adequate? That's, that's the big question we've been talking about lately is what is adequate? Uh, we've never had a study that was done to determine what is adequate. We've had formulas for distributions and other things, but uh, I'm not aware of any study that's actually said this is what is required. The most recent study was a 1997 legislative audit, so you can tell there's been quite some time that's passed since then. Well, Commissioner, you, you're obviously a, a, from a larger county. Davis County is one of right. the biggest counties in the state, so I would imagine that ever since this has been in inception, you've been a contributing county. How, right. how does the county feel about that? I think we feel great about it in the sense that we understand that there are a lot of small counties that just don't have the resources to do everything that they need to do as county. Uh, you know, the county is really just a, a subdivision of the state and they're tasked with all kinds of responsibilities and, and assessing is a, is a tough uh, job for a lot of small counties. So by us being able to contribute just a little bit, uh, it makes it possible for them to have the staff to do it. Um, I've always been in favor of that kind of, you know, relationships with uh, with the smaller counties and so forth, and they contribute back to us you know, in, in different ways with open space and places for us to go and enjoy ourselves and so forth, and so I don't have a problem at all with working with them. Mark, I, I think you were about to say something, but... Uh. I was just going <laughs> to emphasize what Chris said when he mentioned the CAMA fee. Mm -hmm. That is a very good thing for all taxpayers throughout the, the state because it will take advantage of economies of a scale of the same kind of a computer system to do this statewide, and then there could potentially be sharing between counties about uh, commercial values and, and residential values that would be similar to what a business, by, like I say, taking advantage of the economies of scale of this statewide system. Would that kind of, from, a, from an assessor's point of view, Chris, would that, would that actually help you in your job in Utah County if you could look at other counties uh, and see what their commercial property values and, and residential values possibly are? I mean, does that, does that help? A lot of times in residential, you may have enough property cells that you can monitor how well you're doing. 
Uh, with commercial, it's very different. And if a motel sells in, in Davis County or Summit County or even down in Kane County, um, it's all based on expenses and revenues and all of that. So it is very valuable to have this commercial data being circulated between the counties so that they can establish what is a fair market value for commercial. Because residential homes, they only pay on 55% of the value. Uh, a commercial property actually pays on 100% of their value. And so it's very, very important that we identify those commercial properties and, and value them properly so that they don't pay an unfair burden. And, and just as a note to the taxpayers that are involved in this, uh, it's probably a fairly important thing that, that y you understand that, that works both ways because accurate assessment, you can either be paying too much or too little, and so getting that accurate information puts everything on a fair playing field. Just, just a plug for it. Any other issues that, uh, that, that seem to be a problem or, or any, I mean, we're looking at something in the legislature, uh, possibly for this session. What are we trying to accomplish? We're really looking at uh, how money is allocated. Um, last year, as, as we mentioned, we, we had 12 counties that were receiving counties. This year we have 10 counties that are receiving. And we've seen some large fluctuations. Um, we had San Pete County that lost $146,000. Uh, they, they were aware of it at the time, but at the same time, we had other counties that were not aware of how much more they were going to receive because of that. Uh, it's actually, there's a pool of money, and how that money is distributed between these counties is really the question at this point, because it becomes very volatile as to how this distribution is occurring currently. Is that a political thing that's happening? Is that a, I mean, you know, it's, why why is this taking longer and longer and longer each year to, to get done? If, if, if they're collecting in November and they don't distribute till 11 months later, and, you, and they're already budgeting for another fiscal season before it's distributed. Um, how, you know, how is it, why is it taking so long? The, the issue here is not, well, the issue here is really how the calculation works. And the calculation requires a parcel count. Uh, this is the unit of measure that's been chosen in the formula. However, the state tax commission does not release those, that information until the reporting is finished which is after the close of every budget year. And so because of that, that because of that, that delay in reporting, and it's not the state tax commission's fault, that's just the report that's relied on. Um, because of that, it, there is a delay. And that's what we're looking at is, is how do we eliminate this delay? How do we actually make this levy collected and distributed like every other levy? Because currently it's not. And there's really no reason that it can't be just like every other levy. I would be interested in finding out exactly how how you propose to make that work or, or how the sponsors of the bill uh, take it to work. We will take a break right now. We'll come back with more of the county seat. Our topic today has been uh, assessing and collecting. It's a line item fee that is on your uh, property tax assessment and how it works, what it's for, some of the problems, some of the challenges and benefits. I think we've done a fairly good job of getting the information out. And we'll be back in just a minute with a wrap up here on the County Seat Studios. In order for there to be adventure, there must first be a land that offers it. In order for there to be discovery, there must first be something undiscovered. It's time you discovered Northeastern Utah's dinosaur lands, the trails, water, beauty, and history that have been 65 million years in the making. Take your journey to a destination where adventure is only limited by your imagination. Join us in Uinta County, Undiscovered Utah. in love with fall, Logan, Utah. What do you picture when you hear Rich County, Utah? Bear Lake Adventure? Snowmobile action? Pristine skiing? Spectacular solitude? Well, if that isn't what first came to mind, 
then you just don't know Rich County. The Bear Lake Monster Polar Plunge, snowmobiling Monte Cristo, ice fishing Bear Lake, skiing the backcountry, fishing at the Cisco Disco. Come and find out what you never knew you were missing. Rich County, Utah.